How many do you have? I'm on a paleo too. I'm on a paleo and a fish. So my first video on how I made um, custom Damashi Opelu rigs was pretty popular. And I said that if people found that useful or helpful uh, in their fishing, that I would make a second video, second part to it, where I show my tips and tricks that I've learned over the years of catching a Pelu uh, using my fish finder and on my kayak in general. With each of the tips, I will try to show an example uh, from on the water if it's applicable um, to help you guys get a better grasp of what I'm trying to say. Um, and hopefully this will help you guys catch some bait. It's gonna be a long time to learn. Um, so hopefully you guys can watch the whole video and uh, hopefully it helps. So the first tip is to be patient. Um, Opelu fishing can be really hard. Uh, they are very nomadic. So you can go to a spot that you've generally caught them before and they they could just not be there. So the key is to cover a lot of water and always be monitoring your fish finder um, and looking for them. It might take a while or it might take the first drop and you might load up with bait. So tips two, three, and four um, are directly associated with a fish finder. So tip two is to always be looking in the upper one half of the water column. Um, Opelu, are occasionally you'll find them at the bottom but they generally will sit in the uh, the upper half of the water column where if you see marks on your fish finder that are below that oftentimes you'll drop your sabiki down and uh, you can lose it to bottom fish so like moanas or taape um, and they can tear apart an expensive rig sometimes it's fun just to drop lower because uh, you can load up on moana and taape but for the most part, if you want to be consistent with catching Opelu and only catch Opelu for bait, um, I would say try to keep your bait above the lower part, the lower region of uh, the water. Tip three. When you're selecting your fish finder, I like the fish finders that have high chirp and high frequency. This means that it regularly repeats and sends a signal down and it can pick up smaller fish. Those large transducers that can have ser like serious depth um, aren't as impactful when you're looking directly for bait. It's a lot easier to see clear remarks with high chirp. Number four, the marks vary. So when I say look for a cloud, sometimes that could be a dark, like cloudy look to it, or it could be speckles. But if it's in the top half of the water column, I generally try to drop. Um, if you don't get bit in the first or second drop, um, most likely it's not a Pelu, but they can vary from day to day. Sometimes they're schooled up really heavily, sometimes they're sporadic. Tip number five, be ready to drop at any moment. Generally, when I'm looking at my fish finder and I'm Opelu fishing, I am looking and I am glued to my fish finder. I'm looking for the first speck of a school coming by in that top water column. I repeat the water column a bunch because that's the key to finding them on your fish finder. Um, at least that's what I think. But when I see the beginning of a school coming in um, from like usually it's the, the right side of my fish finder, that's when I drop because they move so fast that if you were to wait too long and then drop, there's a good chance those fish have swam to a different part of the water where your sabiki is not gonna hit them. So I always look for the beginning of a school and I'll drop. So oftentimes I'll drop on something before I even know it's Opelu and then I'll confirm it once they start biting and once that graph lights up in that region. Tip number six, um, there's something I call risking for the biscuit where when you drop down, you have six hooks on your sabiki, especially if you made the one I made, most of the store-bought ones are th the same. Um, when you drop it down, and you feel that initial bite, which will oftentimes stop your weight when you're going down. Um, I like to sometimes, if I already have a few baits in the tube, hold it there, let it stay down there because one fish, one opelu, they're strong. They can hold up your weight. 
and you can reel in a singular fish. Meanwhile, if you let it hold down there a little longer, um, there's a decent chance that more will load up and you might be able to get a stringer of two or three of them, maybe even a full stringer of six. Um, but that is a risk because if you have that one on, there's a good chance that he can rip off and or other ones can get gut hooked. And that leads into my next tip. Tip number seven, handle the baits really carefully. When you take off your baits from the hook, you want to try to keep them in the best shape possible. The worst thing is if you go out and you only catch a few live baits and then they die because you mishandled them. Sometimes it's inevitable. Um, they will swallow it and or they will hook their mouth funny. But I always say handle your bait with the best care because you want that to be as lively as possible when you put it out. That always gets the best strikes. Um, another tip with that is if you do manage it or you do happen to get one um, that's injured, so either its mouth, mouth is messed up or it's bleeding, I would be I would say put that one out first. A fish often, like the Opalu, they often do better on the hook than they do in the tube. And a dead one in the tube can also hinder the live ones that are in the tube and possibly kill them. So always put your damaged one out first if you happen to have one. Tip number eight, know the seasonality. So here in Hawaii, um, I like to generally think there are two big seasons of Opelu. There's the summertime and there's the wintertime. The in-between months are really good, actually, and that's oftentimes when I catch the pelagics. But um, seasonality is important. Oftentimes during the winter, I catch a lot of baits, and there aren't as many predators. So I have a copious supply of baits, and it's a lot easier. And um, during the summer, it's a lot harder to find baits. But once you find them, it's a much higher percentage of those baits getting eaten by the predators. So there are trade-offs to the seasons. Tip nine and 10 go together. Um, tip nine is that opelu are oftentimes around other life. I say look at the top half of the water column for the opelu, but oftentimes if you're in an area and you see life on the bottom, that is a good omen for potentially finding the uh, opelu above them. So other stuff will follow it. And there comes tip number 10. Opelu piles hold fish. So oftentimes everyone's like, oh yeah, the pelagics, they stay out deep and the inshore fish, they stay shallow. The only real time that I've found them not following that plan is they follow food. So if you're near an opelu pile, you have plenty of baits. I like to put down a bait. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully if it's useful for you guys, please leave a like and a comment. Um, I wish I had a video like this when I started getting into kayak fishing. It's Hopefully I can uh, show you guys what I took a while to learn and uh, enjoy this video of me attempting to catch a good size of Lua and Opelu at the same time. There we go. Nope. There you go, I got some right here. I'm on a Paley too. I'm on a Paley and a fish. I might need assistance. Do you think you can take this Opelu rod real quick? I was reeling in my Opelu rod and I got a big hit. I know I have some on here. I have one in the thing. If you can get those guys in and manage them for me. There you go. Got it. Thank you. 
James to the rescue. Yeah, it's an Alua. One. Well, I got hooked up. Bye, friend.